Hi, Cliff Brake from Beck Systems. I'd like to show you some recent changes to Git PLM. So I provided a quick overview too of the current state of the program. So Git PLM is, is a tool and a set of conventions that allow us to process data used for manufacturing a product. So Git PLM does several things. It, it uh, combines VOMs with a part master to populate manufacturing information, automates the generation of release manufacturing information, and basically gathers up everything. So when we're done, we get a we get a directory tree that looks like this. We have a part, top level part number, and then we have uh, release directories for all the subassemblies in the in the in the product as well. So this is a a mechanical assembly, another mechanical assembly, there's a printed circuit assembly, the printed circuit assembly includes a PCB, the PCB release includes Gerber's and man manufacturing information, and Git PLM's job is to basically go into all your source directories where the designs exist, extract the manufacturing information, and put it all in one place. So in the end you can just zip all this up and then ship it off to your contact contract manufacturer and then they have everything they need and it's it's a automated controlled process so the reduces the possibility of making mistakes or other things like that so so there's uh let's see there's we use part numbers we call them IPNs internal part numbers and these are identify all the parts and components we use in the product so these are made of three fields. The first is a category. The second is an incrementing sequential number. And the last is a variation code, which is used to identify versions or variations in a part. We store all these IPNs in a single part master. And currently we're just using a CSV file, so this is what that might look like. This is a small demo. You would typically have hundreds of parts in here. And again, we have an IPN, and then we have a manufacturer, and then a manufacturer part number. So this allows us, typically the IPN is what you store in your CAD libraries, and then Git PLM combines an IPN with a part master and then populates the manufacturing information. So for components we manufacture, we identify those with special category codes. And I'm typically working with enclosures that contain printed circuit boards, so that's subset I have here, but you could customize this to whatever you need. So Git PLM looks for source directories, and then it takes data from source directories and creates release directories. And the source directories are identified by the category and then the number, just the first two sections of the IPN. And then the actual release directory is, is the full IPN where the variation is the version of the part we're producing. So there will be a separate release directory for every version that we produce. And we keep all these around and the reason we do that is one product may require version 2 of a subassembly and the next product may require version 3 of that same subassembly, but we always want all the versions to be available so that any product can pull in any any version. There's two special files, mfg.md, changelog.md. Uh, every component should have a changelog, which basically lists what changed between, ver between versions. Source directory can contain a release configuration file, and this is a YAML file that has several sections. We can remove parts from a BOM. We can add parts to a BOM. And the reason for this is CAD systems will output a BOM, and then oftentimes we need to add a few parts to that or pull a few parts off. And this configuration file allows us to do that in an automated way. Another thing we can do is run hooks, and these are just commands that get run, or scripts, if you will. And the first, first one here, we're taking the date command, 
and redirecting it to the release directory timestamp.txt file. In the second example, we have a longer multi-line script, and that's denoted by this vertical bar pipe character. And then that that's a YAML syntax that says all these following lines go together. So it will execute all, all three of these as one single script. The next section is a copy section and basically copies files or directories from the source directory to the release directory. So one thing you might do is you might have a hook that would tell KiCad to generate a BOM and maybe another hook to generate the Gerbers and then in the copy section you would copy the Gerbers and manufacturing files and, and stuff to the release directory. The last section is a required section and basically that looks for required files if they don't exist it will give you an error. And this is for manually generated files which we can't automate but we want to make sure they're in the release directory before we consider it or the release finished. So let's go through an example. So this is the git plm source code. And in that source code there is an example directory. And this example has a top level assembly. And if we look at the BOM for that assembly, we'll notice it calls out a printed circuit assembly and another mechanical assembly. So let's go ahead and run git plm. Let's see, sy dash. So we gave it the full part number and then and that's basically the name of the release directory it generated so we can look inside this directory and we'll notice we'll have a BOM and then this BOM basically takes the BOM down here combines it with a part master and it's a full BOM with manufacturing information now this dash all BOM is a BOM that includes the information from all recursively from all the sub BOMs. So it includes the BOM information from, from everything else. And the last thing we'll notice is any, any custom sub assembly, it will link to the release directory for those components. So now you'll notice all, all the manufacturing information, all the release information is now included in this one directory. If we look at the YML file for this, we'll notice we're creating the timestamp and then we're running these echo commands. And if you look over here, you'll see the echo commands are indeed printing out. So that script did run. And if you look in the release directory, you'll see a timestamp file, and that was generated by that line in the in the YAML file. So one other thing to to look think about is is for printed circuit boards we separate the assembly and the and the bare PCB part numbers. And the reason we do that is we'll often manufacture a printed circuit board and then we'll make part changes later on. So the the assembly may change, the BOM may change, but the actual PCB won't so it's useful to have those as separate numbers. So the, the CAD tools generate the BOM without the PCB number in it. So what we do in, in the PCA YAML file is we actually add the PCB part number to the BOM. And then in the PCB YAML file we copy the Gerber manufacturing and schematic to the uh, to the PC, PCB release directory. Now we could add hooks that would generate these files, and that would be better. So if that's possible, you know it's better to generate everything rather than rely on manual steps. So that's a quick overview of Git PLM in its current state. Uh, if you have any feedback, uh, please reach out. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks.